Yo, what's up y'all? Welcome back to our hide and seek series. So today I want to begin working on our UI, more specifically our game status UI. So an idea I had for this is to make a small little gray box in the center of the screen right here. And what it will do, it will display the basic status information such as intermission and waiting for players. And then what I want to do with this is once the game actually starts, I want to create a little animation where once everybody's in the game, the UI will scale down on its own. It'll begin displaying the time remaining in the middle. And then on both sides, I want to have a little counter. So it'll be like one, one thirty time remaining and then one. So it'll be one seeker left, one minute 30 left and then one hider left. So to begin, let's make our UI. All right, y'all. So to begin coding our UI, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to replicated storage and make a string value for our status. I'm gonna not parent that to place spawn. So this will receive a message from our main script on the server, and it will convert it to something that this status UI can interpret, and then we can put that on the UI as text. But now what we wanna do, we go to our main script, and the first thing we need to do is we need to identify our status so rep storage find first child status now i think the best thing to do you can start by changing all of these to status.value is started and we can change started to game is or game starting now that we have this what we can do is once all of our players have been put into the game all of our hiders instead of just waiting 10 seconds directly we can make a loop here for 10 seconds and we can task that wait one second so every second we'll update the ui and tell them when the seeker is coming so we can put that value is i so it'll say we could put hide and then it'll tell you the time so it can be like hide you only have five seconds left so you got to get moving now that we have this we see here that this is our entire game loop so what we want to do, we want to put the entire game on a countdown. So you'll only have, let's say 120 seconds for the entire round. So we can go up here, just what's easier to change. We can put local round time is, we can say two times 60. So it's easier to change. We can just change this to the amount of minutes we want. And it'll just put that into seconds. So we can come down here and while task weight one, you can put local number would just be the same as the round time and what we do here number we subtract one from the number and then we come down here and we can put if number is less than or equal to zero then put over is true so we mark the game is over and then the winner will be the hiders because they ran the time out the seekers were not able to find them so we'd come down here we'd say the hiders have won the game now what we can do is down here we can put our status the value is the number so it'll say 120 seconds remaining and then what we can do we can go to the status UI later and we can convert this to minutes and seconds so it'll be like two minutes and five seconds remaining if there was however many seconds that is I don't know, I have no idea now that we have that we can come down here so once we have whoever wins the game instead of just printing it to the server we can put status value is that the hiders or the seekers have won the game so now it will tell you this right here that the hiders have won the game so we can just say in the ui that whenever the thing is not a number it will be this size and whenever it is a number it can scale down it can enable the the numbers right here so we can see our seeker and hider count and it will just have two separate functions for it so we can tell when it's in game mode and when it's in 
normal mode. So when we join the game, we know if the game's in action. So now back here, the last thing we should do, we change this intermission. We just want to put the status out value to just intermission instead of round over intermission. So now that we have all this, we can just make a little basic test system. We can do put a local script into the status UI. We can just call this updater. We can say local replicated storage is the replicated storage. So we can get the service, replicated storage. Come down here, local status, rep storage, sign from style status. Now we have the status, status.change. So every time the status is changed, we can just set our status text. Status text text is our status.value. Now we can test this out real quick. So now we're in the game. We see it says the intermission. I already played around, so we'll see what it looks like. See the game starting. So we have 10 seconds to hide. We can just fix this going up by changing the order. So we'll go 10, 9, 8 instead of 1, 2, 3. See once it's 10, the seeker's been released. The counter changes to 120. We can run up here, we can get tagged. Once we get tagged, once we explode, it'll kill us and we'll teleport back to spawn. And we see the Seekers have won the game. There's no wait there, so it'll just instantly take it away. But we see for now that it works out. And now back in studio, we go to our main script. So we can change this around. We can say task.wait 5 seconds. So we'll have 5 seconds to see that the Seekers or the Hiders have won the game before it changes to intermission. Another thing we need is up here. If it's just waiting for players to join the game, we can put status.value is waiting for players. So now if there's not enough players, it will tell us. So another thing we need to do, we need to come down here. We need to flip this. So instead of 1 through 10, we can go 10 to 1. And then we can go by increments of negative 1 instead of positive 1. So we'll go 10, 9, 8, and so on. Now once we have this, coming back to our updater script. What I want to do is actually make this interpret the text that it receives. So I'll put local value is status.value. And then we can put if we turn the value into a number, if we receive something, then we'll do something to it. But if we don't receive a number, we'll just put the text in normally. And then if the value is a number, we can also just put this for now because I want to make a tween. So what we can do is Local size one is, you can say, this will be our main size, so the size it is right now. So right now it's 0 0.20, 0 0.10, and then local size two can be just half of that for now. So 0 0.1, 0 0.05. And then we should go ahead and clarify this. So this one is our numbers size. This one will be our text size. Now that we have this, we can just say local size is script up here dot size. And then we can say if the size, while it's a number, doesn't equal size two, then we'll go ahead and tween the size of our parent. So we can do script up parent tween size. And then we can put size two. What I want to do is put the easing direction in out and in our easing style. That is to sign, and we want to do the same for our other one. So we can put if size doesn't equal size one, then then we do the same thing. But instead of size two, we put size one. Fix our formatting. So now, if we have a number, if this script receives a number, then we'll try and make our thing smaller, and we'll put our text as the value, the value we receive. And then if we don't have a number, we'll put it to our normal size and we'll just put the base text onto the screen. So before we test, I forgot to put new right here. And now we can test this out. So we see here our player, he's our hider, he can run around. We see that we have our hiding thing, so it should be normal still. And then once it changes to numbers, it will get smaller. And then we run up, we get tagged. And once we explode, once we turn back into a seeker, we'll see that our text gets bigger once the game ends. And it says intermission, the Seekers have won the game, intermission, and it'll continue playing like normal. So now what we can do is, we can say that this is our transition. This can be our transition for the other one as well. So we just take this, put this here. So now what we can do, we can come up here, 
and we can define our local seeker count is our script.parent.seeker count and our hider count is script.parent.hider count. Now that we have this, we can come here. We can say that seeker count that visible is true. And right now we actually cannot access the number of seekers since it's in server storage. So what we can do just to make sure this can't be tweaked with and messed with from the client, we can put two values in here. We can put int value, we can put hider count. And we can put seeker count. And then in main, we can come here. Every time the round starts, we can put hider count dot value is number of player folder get children and then seeker count dot value is the number of chosen folder get children we need to define these so we come up here local hider count is replicated storage find for south hider count and local seeker count is the same but for seekers seeker count now that we have this value being changed we can come back to the script seeker count dot text it's replicated storage find first child seeker count dot value and then we also make our hider count visible and we can make our hider count dot text the same as replicated storage find first child hider count dot value we don't want to put text color and then what we can actually do we can take this put this here we can take this Put this here because what we're actually doing is we'll be changing this text every time we get a new status so every time the second change and then what we can do is if we're transitioning here from size 2 to size 1 we can put seeker count dot visible is false and hider count dot visible is false so now we can test this out so now we see that we're in the intermission we have our status working fine we get spawned in, game starting, we have 10 seconds to hide, we can run around, we'll hide behind it right here, and once the game starts, we'll see our it spawns in, we have our hider count, we have our seeker count, and we'll see the time still moving down, and then we can go and get tagged by player 1, and once we get teleported back to spawn, once the game ends, what happens is, the seeker and hider count are removed, the seekers have won the game, and our round system starts back to normal. So one last thing I noticed is that our display, even though the screen's kind of cramped in the game, it's really small, you can't really tell the details. So we'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We'll put this at 0 0.07. So it's a little bit smaller. We have to update this here. So 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.070. 0. Change this to 3.5, change this to 1.5. So finally, what I want to do is when we have the time up here, I want to convert it from just the seconds to the minutes and the seconds. So what I've done, I've imported one of my module scripts and we'll see right here, we have this, it turns our seconds into hours, minutes and seconds. So we can take this and since the variable it uses is S, we can just put local S as status.value. We can take this and put this here and we remove the hours from it. So this isn't needed. And we take the hours out of here. We remove all these extra quotation marks. We remove this. And now instead of just the seconds, like 120, 119, 118, we'll see 159, 158, 157 is in one colon 58. So we'll actually see the minutes and the seconds required for the game to end. So we see our hider. We have 10 seconds to hide. It'll do our countdown normally. We see it's our normal size right now, we can run around. And then once our seeker gets teleported, it'll move down. We have 1 minute 57. We see it, it's readable. We can see our number of seekers left, we can see our number of hiders left. We know exactly what's going on in the game. We can run and get tagged. Once we get tagged, we'll get turned to a seeker. This number would go up if there were more players. But since there's not, we see our seekers have won the game. The text gets bigger, so we know the round's over. It'll say intermission and we'll keep going just like that. So that'll do it for today, y'all. We made our status UI. We see it right here. We'll see it'll get smaller. It'll get bigger when the game ends. So we know if it's small, the game's in progress. If it's big, the game's over. 
and then once the countdown's going on we'll see our number of seekers our number of hiders we'll see the exact minutes and seconds remaining so we know exactly what's going on at all times in the game it's readable we can know what's going on it will help our players know when the game's going to end how much time they have to hide for and how much time they have left to seek see y'all in the next episode